everybody and welcome back to another episode of Whispering Willows and I am still Jayla. Um, and we left off last when I came out of the well because we just found Flying Hawk is his name? I'm really bad at names. Yes, Flying Hawk's body down in the bottom of the well. So our new task is to now get into the mansion. Um, those are the spirits we already talked to so I'm not going to bother with that again. But, oh we can get in now. Oh, chapter two, Wortham's Warrior. So we finished chapter one, apparently, I didn't even realize. And um, I would assume that's the family portrait back there. That is some gravity defined hair, if I do say so myself. She has no idea what the mill bust is. Um, that, the hell is that? It's a spirit in here though. Oh, hello. Darby O'Halloran. Oh, it's just a wee lass, Wortham's my best mate. You won't be getting past me. He don't want to see the likes of you. My wife's more inclined to wasting time with little girls. Um, alright. So, I would assume that- Did they have elevators back then? Um, gramophone. It belongs in a museum. Alright, those aren't that old. I- Jesus. Scary noises. Um, alrighty. You diary entry. Darby Hollering. I met a huge man inside the mansion named Darby. He has a strange accent that sounds Irish, but I'm not quite sure. He didn't want to talk to me much, but he did mention someone named Wortham. I think Wortham was the man who owned this mansion. We learned about him in school. He helped to create our town. I don't know why that Darby guy would mention him, but he didn't want to tell me much. He even yelled at me, so I left him alone. I don't know why he'd be so mean to a little girl. It's very true. Why would you be mean to a little girl? How old are you actually? I don't actually know how old Elena is, which is kind of worrying. All right, a new note. Uh, is it this one? No. Yeah. Right, please. All right, so we're the wheels 513. I met with a Quantaka shaman this morning, a man named Flying Hawk. We met to discuss the bartering of this land, but our conversation took a turn. He told me that this area was rife with spiritual power, that the veil between this life and the next was thinner here than elsewhere. We spoke of Martha, that he could help me to see her again. I believed him and he offered me his peace pipe. I wasn't sure, but the man told me that it would help me to free myself. I partook of the strange smoke he gave me, and the man told me I must let go of her if I wished to see her again, that my spirit must be pure. We sat in meditation for some time, my mind raced all the while. A bout of paranoia sees me and I realized what this medicine man was trying to do. He would have me abandon my hopes for the future, have me live a life of savagery. I knew he was trying to poison my mind and I would have I would have wagered that the smoke was of nefarious intent as well. I refused to abide such insolence. I stood from my seat and challenged this necromancer to fight me, but he did not stir. I wrapped my hand around his throat and still he did not move. I squeezed until I felt the life leave from his body and he slumped down. I released my grip and my fingers peeled from his skin as he fell back from me. I exited the teepee and gave my men the order to purge these vile savages from this earth, as God would command me to. Darby even made his first kill. I would be proud of him, but he trembled by his horse the rest of the battle. It was just a little girl. They're savages after- Okay. <coughs> Excuse me. So Wortham is officially an asshole. So he murdered Flying Hawk. And then Darby, who's the one that we met by the elevator, the spirit we met by the elevator, actually murdered a little girl. Which is probably why he feels so rude rudely inclined when he speaks to us. He probably feels very guilty about it. What an asshole. <clears throat> Wortham didn't have such bad taste after all. I don't know if a suit of armor means you don't have bad taste, but you know. Alrighty. Um, I guess let's try- oh, never mind the door's locked. Alright, so we're not going into the door like I planned. We're gonna go up here and see what's up. Literally. Um, Right, so thing fell there. Oh, hello. Claire O'Halloran. Oh, that's Darby. My poor Darby. His murder was never found, despite my efforts. I was looking into his death, but something stopped me. To this day, I don't know what it was. Please help me, Elena. I can't rest until his murder is found. Alrighty, so Darby was murdered. Um, that's not comforting at all. <clears throat> I really like the way the ghosties look. Um, I don't suppose we can talk to him again. No, okay. He kind of just says the same thing. So I guess if we can, we should try to be helping as many of the spirits as possible. Um, 
actually, in this case, it might be the only way to progress, but who knows. Um, let's see. Note. So I can actually pick up notes when I'm a ghost. Um, John Elkhorn. Okay, so let's start dad. <clears throat> I'm among the few remaining of my bloodline, descended from a line of powerful shaman. I may not have the powers they once did, but my attunement with nature remains the same. It's taken me some time to recognize it, but there's a subtle energy at play here that permeates the very air I breathe. The veil between the planes of life and death in this place is thin. Spirits seem to pass between planes as, as through osmosis. It's almost indescribable the way I can feel their presence here. I want to know what it all means. So I wonder if our dad was, our father was going, like, looking into things and then disappeared because shit went wrong. Um, I don't suppose we can drop it down, can we? Oh, we can. Oh. Nice achievement name. I like it. Right, um, there's a thing here. I'm assuming it's to open that door. Oh, okay, or that, you know. Right. So now we can get upstairs. Um, can't go through that door. Let's see. Oh. We're the Martha and Marcus, the whole happy family. Oops, excuse me, I wanted to go up those stairs though. No, ah, please. There we go. I want to see if we can get to this side. No, of course not. Right. So, I guess we should go this way and see what's upstairs for us. I already talked to that ghost. <laughs> Excuse me. Gosh, I'm coughing, I'm sneezing, everything's going wrong. Man. Up the stairs, Amy? There we go. <clears throat> floor gave way here. This place isn't very safe. Yeah, well, it is an old mansion, to be fair, so I guess that's to be expected. Right. Open the door. Um. Move the thing with space. I'm gonna remove it. I don't know what we're moving this for. I'm confused. I can go down here, though, so I'm gonna do that. Oh, a ghostly key that I can pick up. Trophy room key. Oh, okay. So I can actually just straight up possess the key. That's amazing. I don't suppose there's anything else down here. No. Alright. Cool. So I can pick up the key. This key has such fine detail. Okay. Oh, I wonder... No. I don't think so. Is the trophy room the one downstairs that we couldn't get into, maybe? <laughs> Possibly. Or is it the one across the way? I wonder. Actually, it's probably the one downstairs, considering how many um, statues and crap there is there. Well, I say crap, but... You know. Nope, okay, that's not the door, I guess. Okay, that's odd. Um, I guess upstairs? Oops, excuse me. That's a bit of an awkward navigation there, but that's fine. Okay, so this was the trophy room. Um, I can walk through the trophy room, pick up another note. <sighs> right, oh, Darby O'Halloran, okay. So he has an accent. This is gonna go badly. Today's- oh god, I'm so sorry to anybody I offended with this accent. Today is a day of excitement, to be sure. I'm travelling off with my best mate, Wortham Willows, to the great unsettled west. We seek our fortunes there, and I dare say we'll face many a danger. I've heard tales of beasts and savages that await us. Wortham is but a gentle man and lacks my size, so I feel it is my duty to protect him along our journey. Without him and his, I do not know what would have become of my family. The Willows gave us work when none other would. What? What? None- when none one other would. I feel it's my duty to keep him safe no matter what happens. I feel sold- I will sold to his burdens as best I can. I don't know what the hell's accent is supposed to mean. I think it was supposed to be something Irish, but I don't know how to do Irish. So instead of accidentally offending more people, I'm gonna just do that really weird whatever the hell accent that was that I just did. Go up the stairs, please. I'm so sorry. Um. Through the door we go. 
Right, okay, so this is a haunting room. Hello. Thought it said something. Wow! Nice achievement. Grizzly bear? Oh my. Ah. Uh, right, so stairs. No, no. Okay. This is Darby again. Okay, no, it's Wortham. Is it Wortham? Who is it? Oh no, it's John. Okay, so it's our dad again. I've enjoyed delving into the mysteries of this place. There's so much to learn, and I'm not referring to all the books and pieces of history that just collect dust. No, I speak of something else entirely. When I was a boy, my grandfather taught me to commune with nature, that it was the most spiritual endeavor I could hope to perform. At the time, I didn't know what he meant. But spending time here has opened my eyes to the truth of the old man's sage words. I can admit in these pages that I've seen things no other living man has seen. I've ventured beyond the mortal coil and found the other side. I've come back, but not wholly unscathed. I feel marks upon the fabric of my soul, but what that means, I don't know yet. Excuse me. So, it seems that our father has attempted to make a uh, spiritual journey without guidance. So, I don't know if it's the same in Native American uh, history and whatnot. A bed frame. Does someone sleep up here? Probably a servant. Um, but I'm gonna wait to talk for a second. I don't know if it's the same in Native American literature as other things, but I have seen a lot of things that say that most people need something physical to ground them to come back from any type of spiritual journey for the people that believe in that. So I'm wondering if our father attempted to do such a thing and didn't have something physically grounding. So like, Elena has her amulet, so which allows her to come back, I would assume. Because I feel like the amulet's important to this. Anyway, let's talk to this person. Emiko Minami. Excuse me, are you Asian? Oh my god, she's supposed to be Japanese. Oh, I'm so sorry. Oh, hi, oh, I am one of the- I have one of- I, I can't speak anymore! I am one of Wortham's many guests. A pleasure to meet you. Oh. Okay, that's all you have to say. So she's supposed to be Japanese. Totally can't tell by the th by the way her clothes looks! That was pure sarcasm, by the way. Uh, let's see. Ah, Fleur La Rue. Okay. My hands tremble and it is all I can do to hold the pen as I write herein. I have even missed the inkwell on a few occasions. I have only just come home from the most wonderful evening of my life. I feel I need to catch my breath. Wortham Willows, the town's mayor, the richest, most influential man for hundreds of miles around, took me out for a night on the town. And what a night it was, not notwithstanding the secrecy. I have never been treated so much like royalty. I could not believe it every second I was there. It was amazing. We truly had a feast with dishes that covered every inch of the table. Afterwards, he treated me to a play. I'd never been to a play before. My head still swims from all the fine wine and excitement. He is truly a romantic gentleman, this Wortham Willows. I hope to see him again soon. But for now, I must rest. I can feel my heart flutter in my chest. Oh god, she's lovesick for Wortham Willows. He's an asshole, lady! Don't do it! Jeez, Alex! Don't be so sassy! It turned red! Oh, what are you doing? Ah! Skeleton in our house! I love that he just shoves it into his face. Oh, oh god, boy! Oh, 